my name is Jenna, but you guys can call me Jen. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. Hi, hello. I have a popsicle that I'm gonna eat. Happy weekend. And we're here, friends. It is here. The weekend has arrived yet again. It is Friday. It is really bright out and it is almost 10 p.m. <laughs> I forgot that this happens on the longest week of like the longest daylight time of the year week. What a fun time. What a great time. I wanted to pop in and start this vlog because why not? This weekend is gonna be full of just nothing. I might go over to my friends tomorrow and have a chill time there. Sa Sunday is Father's Day. I don't know what we're doing for Father's Day. I'll have to talk to my parents, but other than that, what am I going to be doing? I'm going to be sitting right here and I'm going to be reading something and I'm going to be writing something. I have four books that I could choose from this weekend. I'm gonna try, I think I'm gonna try Five Broken Blades one more time. Honey. <laughs> I was so thrown off when I tried this for my try a chapter tag because this is in first person present tense and it's multiple POV and when something is multi POV my brain demands that it is in third person because third person is superior to me as a fantasy reader sorry about that so I'm gonna give this another try and someone did comment on my video for my like June TBR that this does have a male male romance in it so it does work for queer month queer month <laughs> it does work for pride month so we're gonna give it another try you've got a big storm coming and it better not fail me because it's so beautiful although my friend Ellie did send me a, a TikTok of someone absolutely ripping it apart so we shall see how this one goes <laughs> And now I'm actually kind of more curious to give it a try. I also have a Tempest of Tea by Half Faisal. This is the Fairy Loot Edition because I got it off of Facebook Marketplace. I love Facebook Marketplace. So I am, I don't know why this is calling to me, but it is. It's not on my June TBR, but it's calling to me. As you guys know, last weekend totally ruined my taste for my June TBR. But also this is pitched as like an Arthurian retelling meets Peaky Blinders. There's tea, there's vampires. And I know from the internet, people say it is slower than they expected it to be. So I'm going in with very low expectations because it's also YA, but I also have slight expectations because if this isn't good and it's this beautiful, I'm gonna be so mad. <laughs> And then I have two library books that I picked up last week in my library haul. My library, it wasn't even last week, it was Monday. Anyways, <laughs> My Government Means to Kill Me by Rashid Nusen. I am really looking forward to diving into this. I have the audiobook of Libby and it's a tiny little book so I feel like I could probably pop it off really quickly or at least get through it faster. And then I also have The Other Side of Night by Adam Hamdi, which I also have the audiobook for. And again, it's a little smaller than my usual reads. So this weekend we have these four books. I have also 800,000 more <laughs> on my Kobo around me currently, all that good stuff. But I would like to read a couple things this weekend. These are the goals. This is the, this is the plan. This is the, this is the action, the plan of action. And then of course I will be writing, be working on Project Sourdough. If you guys missed my vlog on Project Sourdough that went up on Friday, go give it a watch. It's very exciting. It's my very first novella and my very first proper contemporary romance book as a fantasy author. And I know I can hear my friend Sophia being like, bitch, you write romance. And I know my books, A Second Story and A Little Luck, are basically like romance wrapped in a high fantasy blanket, but it's fine. <laughs> in my head, everything needs a little bit of magic and wonder, which romance, I guess you just kind of have to make that magic and wonder. I don't know. Anyways. Go watch that vlog if you haven't watched it. I also have a, a bunch of these beautiful baby dragons if you missed my TikTok about them. We got this one here, which is Locke Jr., a little LJ. We have this one here, which is Indes, who's named after a dragon in Project Dragon, if you will. She's so beautiful. And then we have another one, currently in my bedroom, named Orbit, after one of my favorite publishers, Orbit. <laughs> I also restarted playing Breath of the Wild. I went back in today to where, wherever my save file was and I was so confused as to where the fuck I even was, what I was doing, cause it's been so long since I played. And also the mechanics of the game because I've been playing so much Stardew and I was just like, I don't know how to play this anymore. So I just restarted the game. I was really enjoying that opening sequence so I might play a little bit more of this as well. Any hoozle, it's the weekend. Get ready my beautiful friends, it's gonna be a good time. But yeah, I'm gonna get back to watching Critical Role because I'm also trying to catch up on Camping 3 of Critical Role 
and I'm enjoying it immensely. <laughs> I don't remember what, what episode I'm on, but I'm on something in the late 80s at this point. So that's fun. Welcome to the weekend. It's another beautiful time to get some reading done. beautiful people happy saturday i am here i am about to go <laughs> to pick up a special edition of a book i saw on facebook marketplace i think it's called sword catcher <laughs> like santa claire and i'm getting it for 30 dollars, which is great because it's a special edition of a book anyways i apologize for my air conditioning from there i'm going to be going to my friend's place Alas, apologies. I apologize. I'm going to a friend's place, my friend Yelani, bringing my dress with me because she said she could alter it for me because I need the top fixed a little bit because it's a little loose up here, but everywhere else it fits perfectly. So I'm gonna bring it with me and hopefully she can help me alter it because she's a sewing machine. She also has a sewing machine. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be my afternoon and evening. I think we're gonna do dinner as well, which should be fun and spicy. I finished this in three hours last night because of course I made the intelligent decision to start a book at midnight. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I'm only gonna read for an hour. And then at 3.30 in the morning, I was finishing it. So I was like, well, here we go. I will talk to you about this later. It did, it did, it was good, and I'm not mad at it, so yay. <laughs> anyway, and I'm giving the Five Broken Blades book a try. I'm 50 pages in, I have very little opinions, except for the fact that I still don't know if I like high fantasy in first person, present tense, especially when it's so multi POV. So far we've had four POVs, and I will say listening to the audiobook is a lot better than just reading it physically because at least with the audiobook, it's a full cast. So you're getting a whole bunch of different people voicing the characters. I don't know how I feel about the, the first person present tense multi POV high fantasy book. I'll have to let you know how I feel about it. But anyways, I gotta run out of my place and we are going to head to ye old other side of the fucking city. <laughs> and I'll, uh, I'll chat to you guys a little later, but yeah, happy. Saturday. Um. Ha, <laughs> 
<laughs> Hello, beautiful friends. I am now home. My goodness gracious. Let me see if I can put you up a little higher. That works. Hi. Je suis home from Yanni's. She had to go and run out and do some pet sitting some cats. So she had to go feed them. <laughs> so we had a lovely afternoon evening together, which was great. I also picked up the book, Sword Catcher. Look how beautiful this is. I am fully obsessed with all these end pages. Gorge. The front one is also beautiful as well. Gorgeous. But the best part is the hardcover. Look at that embossing. Stunning. You know, say what you want about Cassie Clare. <laughs> She's probably not the best person in the world. Say what you want about her books. Homegirl writes some crack into her books. So I know I'm gonna love this. <laughs> and I'm happy I found the, the special edition because also look at these, these spreads. Look how gorgeous. Anyways, I came over here to get myself some more water because my water bottle is out. And also, say hi and talk to you about a tempest of tea by half the Faisal. So while that's filling, I apologize for the hissing in the background, but a tempest of tea. I decided to start that one last night. I had the audiobook, and honestly, the audiobook narrator was prime. She was so good. I, as I said earlier, I was just gonna read it for like an hour, but I just was like, mm, I don't really wanna stop yet. I don't really wanna stop yet. Then I was halfway through, and it was like almost 2 a.m., and I was like, I don't wanna stop yet. I just wanna keep going. And then I was like, what if I give it just a little, like one more chapter, and then one more chapter, and then like, fucking 20 more chapters went by <laughs> and then it was me being like I should go to bed going to bed walking around with a book in front of me listening to it also and then it was 3 30 in the morning <laughs> and I had like nothing left and I was like well I guess I'm finishing it tonight <laughs> it wasn't like the most action-packed book and it was not the most gripping book or most insane book. Like it was just a very solid book. The writing was beautiful. Hafsa Faisal's writing is so gorgeous. Like the, the reading experience of this book was like, I didn't really want to put it down, but it wasn't like, I can't put this down. I must finish it now. And I was just in a really good mood for it. And it was just really lovely to read. I was hooked by what was going on and the characters and all that kind of stuff. And I wanted to see where it was going, but there wasn't anything like super like stand out with this book. It didn't shock me in any way. But it was just one of those things that like, it was just a good solid YA book and not to the way of like, oh, such a YA book. No, no, like this was a good solid book. I really enjoyed it. And I don't know <laughs> if I see any of the other complaints people have been having about it. I don't see it being too slow at the beginning. I think it was paced fine. It might've been because I say this with a grain of salt though, because I do read books super fast when I'm reading them on three times speed. <laughs> with the audiobook. But again, you guys remember, I read it in tandem with my eyeballs and that's as fast as my eyeballs go. I need it to be as fast as my eyeballs go, you know? And so that's how fast I read. <laughs> and I'm just like zooming across the page, especially YA. YA, so fast. Adult fantasy, I sometimes need to slow it down a little bit because it's a lot of, it's very dense, you know? But Tips of Tea was great. I really enjoyed it. Am I like chomping at the bit for more? No, but I think it was a really solid read. Like there's nothing super terribly wrong with it that I can find. But yeah, it was a solid read and I'm not disappointed, which is the best thing because this book is so beautiful that if I was disappointed by it, I would be crying because this is such a beautiful book and it has become such a nice like staple on my shelves. Like look at this. If you wanna, there we go, go back in place. She is just stunning. Don't focus on me, focus on the book. Love. Anyways, <laughs> and now we got this beautiful boy, which I guess is probably just gonna have to slide up there for now, cause, oh, it's published by Tor. I didn't know Tor did like special editions. That's really fun. Oh, it was in my bookmark. I was like, what the fuck? I don't know. We're gonna have to figure out where that's gonna go. But for now, it's just gonna hang out there with the other Cassie Clare books that I have on my shelves. <laughs> <laughs> what a day. Anyways, and I also started today Five Broken Blades. And again, I think I talked about that earlier. I have no opinion on it whatsoever. Truly. Mainly because, I don't know, I just, I have 50 pages in. I don't have an opinion. We're gonna see how far I can get without having an opinion. <laughs> 
but we'll see. I'm not hating it. There hasn't been anything super egregious other than the first person present tense. That is a little egregious in and of itself. For now, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine as is. Anyways, I'm now back home. Also, this book is gorgeous. Can we always make the, the naked hardbacks this pre beautiful? If we're spending $40 on a hardback, which you are in Canada normally, for an adult fantasy book, can we always make them this pretty? Can we make it worth it? Because I don't want to look at a dust jacket that looks like this after I've, or look at a book that looks like this after I've spent $40 on it. I want to look at it when it's shiny and beautiful, you know? Can we make that a thing? Just a standard in publishing? That'd be nice. <laughs> Anyways, now that I'm home, it's 10 o'clock. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Probably do some more reading. I think that's that's a good thing. Do I want to read more of Five Broken Blades? I don't know. Maybe I'll see if I can make it to the 100 page mark. Maybe play a little bit of Breath of the Wild. Who's to say? I feel like I've only ever pitched what a Tempest of Tea is about in my videos. Never like giving you what it's actually about because I've always been like it's Arthurian meets Peaky Blinders and like after reading it mm, sort of. <laughs> the only Arthurian element of it is the like sword in the stone kind of vibe which I don't really know why that was a thing. I couldn't really tell you why that was added into this but instead of an actual sword in the stone it was a pistol stuck in plaster. The pistol in plaster instead of the sword in the stone, you know? And it's this like magical pistol that like can morph into different weapons when, when Arthie wants it to. So we are following mainly Arthie and Jim who are pseudo brother and sister. They basically adopted each other when Jim was like 11 and, and Arthie was like nine. They're both orphans, this whole thing. Jin's parents supposedly died in a fire that he tried to save them from, but he just didn't. And then Artie had to save him from the fire. And then that's when they met. And then Artie and him end up, like they're like basically criminals. Um, Jin is a, an extensively incredible thief. And then they run a tea house by day, which is a blood house by night. So all the vampires in their town have a place to come that's safe to drink blood where they don't have to like get it from people they can just get it from teacups or they can get it from people who are willing in the tea house or in the, in the tea house right and at the beginning of this they get the news from their proprietor that their place is going to be taken from them in about two weeks because it is no longer the proprietor's the proprietor had to give it up because someone like blackmailed him and like was threatening his family kind of a thing and they're on like the kind of the wrong side of the city the more grungier side and so they then have to find a way to like try and keep the place for them. But <laughs> then Artie goes back into her office and finds this guard standing in her office whose name is Laith. And Laith offers her this job that if, if she can help him steal these ledgers from like essentially who is, who's the king, who's the ram is called the person who runs this town kind of a thing or is the ruler of it. They wanna they wanna like steal the ledgers from them. So it like kicks off it's a heist book, right? So then Arthi and, and Jin pull together Flick, who is a forger, a master forger, who's have who has her own issues going on with her mom. She's another POV. So it's those three POVs. And then they also have Laith this guard the horned guard, I believe his name is, or his title is. And then they also have um, a vampire named Mateo, who I think is my favorite, <laughs> who like is part of this situation. They're stealing from a very specific place that has to do with the vampires in the city. And also very briefly in the background, vampires are going missing as well. But that's not something that they're really concerned about at the moment. It just, it like ends up having to do with what's going on and like things that they find out. I did, I, I will say the heist part of it was like, the lead up to the heist part of it is my always my favorite part of heist movies and heist books and stuff because that's when you get to see like all the things come together all the planning and all that kind of stuff and it didn't really fall into like the pitfalls of like people planning to do stuff but like mentioning that they're planning but not telling you what they're planning to like keep it a surprise and like do the twist and all that kind of stuff it didn't really fall into that which i'm glad it didn't do because that's always a little annoying when that happens in books but i will say the very end of the heist went way too easy for them <laughs> And like something happened where I was like, well, that was fucking so easy. <laughs> what the fuck? They did not get caught up in as much rep uh, repercussions as I thought they were going to. And it wasn't as big of a like, dramatic twist at the end. It just kind of fell a little flat. The ending of the heist fell a little flat for me. Then it kind of opened up a few other things and then big bombastic evening. And then at that point I was like, is this more than one book? I thought this was a standalone. It's not. It's a, I think it's duology. So <laughs> we'll see when that one comes out if I read it. But 
Yeah, it was totally fine. Five Broken Blades by May My Cor May My May Corland is a six POV. So far, we've only been introduced to four of them, three of them, four. I just got introduced to number four on page like fifty or whatever. I think it's six POV in total of all these different blades and different like assassins and different hired killers and thieves and stuff from around the city who all have to come together because they've all been tasked to kill the king who's essentially like a god king that's what i'm understanding so far so we'll see how that one goes from here <laughs> but yeah that's the update my friend did my nails also it's a very colorful bright summery like orangey ready color very vibrant very lovely she did gel nails so like i don't have to worry about them like at all <laughs> for a while so that's very very nice but i think they look great and i'm gonna figure out what i'm gonna do read a little play a little breath of the wild who's to say but yeah it's been my sunday saturday that's been my saturday and it's now just after 10 p.m so i got the night ahead of me <laughs> as, as we all know i'm not gonna stay up till 4 a.m today though like i did last night no 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 sorry i'm gonna try to go to bed at a normal time for me at least Hello, beautiful friends. Happy Sunday. I'm here to tell you that I have officially DNF'd <laughs> by Broken Blades because, oh my god, there are six POVs in here. I could not tell you a single one of their names, even with the audiobook that is helping me keep, like, a, a full cast audiobook, so it's a different person for every POV voicing it. So, like, to keep it separate. I couldn't tell you what any of their names are because it's all first person. And also, <laughs> what did I do with the cover? It, I don't, there's no, nothing is going on. Nothing is happening. Nothing exciting is going on. I could only tell you very few things about the characters as well. Like there's one guy who is super broody, depressed, angry at himself. No one loves me because I'm super scarred and I got my girlfriend killed. <laughs> kind of vibes. His love interest is this very bubbly, annoying motherfucking girl. And it's so funny because there's <laughs> there is so many characters in here. They're all the same broody, edgy, like broody to the point of just like, it's the narrative trying to make them edgy. You know what I mean? Like they're all like, life sucks. I am mysterious. And then this one is just like, he's so far off the deep end. Cause he's like, I'm scarred Oh, And then there's this one girl who's so, bubbly that it fucking hurts because she's just so annoying <laughs> i'm just like holy shit she's the worst i hate her so much i couldn't tell you their names <laughs> and then there's a like male male love interest prince on the run and some guy that he knew back when he was the prince i don't know who this guy is to him i don't know if it's his like guard a friend fucking i don't know another noble guy who just was around fuck if i know they, I don't know, it doesn't tell me who he is to him, but they like loved each other before and were in a relationship before and they're so horny for each other, but like one of them is like, he's gonna kill me, but there's no proof of that anywhere. And then there's another girl who's a poisoner who has a younger sister who's being held captive by a, by a count. And there's, a, there's, another, there's another POV because there's six POVs. Five, six POVs, five POVs. I don't know, but again, I'm a hundred. I'm a hundred and twenty pages into this. It's I, 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 what, there's nothing. Ha there's nothing happening, because we have too many POVs. They're all currently in limbo transit right now for no reason. None of them are really doing anything to plan for this death of the king that they're all supposed to be contracted for. Why are they all contracted for this when like one of them is, is actually a hide, hired killer and another one is a hired poisoner? It should be 
only two POVs to do this. It would be so much tighter and so much better if it was just two POVs. And it should be in fucking third person because when you have multi POV in first person, it is so hard to keep the characters distinct from each other because they're both just saying, I, 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 you know? Oh my God. Uh, this is also fun fact from Red Tower Books. So that should have been my indication first and foremost. Because we all know what a shit show of a publisher Red Tower Books is. And, like, as I was reading this, and then I was, like, flipping through the back, like, just, like, trying to see, like, how many pages there was, and I was, like, flipping, flipping, and I, like, opened it up to the very last page, and it's literally just, like, connect with us online, Red Tower Books, and I was, like, oh, oh, that makes so much sense, because this is, like, there is no way that Tor or Orbit or the the best pub, like fantasy publishers in the world right now would even touch something like this because this does not have near enough the gravitas or the caliber of beautiful fantasy that we get from orbit books or tour books i don't need no so dnf i'm so mad about it because it's a beautiful book but it's fine i will just sell it <laughs> <laughs> just sell it because I have decided I'm going on my own Facebook marketplace venture. I have a whole bunch of books that, are, that I'm currently staring at them that I've had in my room in boxes that I'm like getting rid of. And then last night I did another purge off my bookshelves, like a, a, a few of them just to get them off my bookshelves and like sitting somewhere. And then I ended up putting up like four or five different listings onto Facebook Marketplace to like try and see if I can sell some, if not all of them. I don't think all of them are gonna go because some of them just aren't like interesting books to people. But I've already had like three, four, five people reach out to me for books. Three for sure. Two of them, two of them, because I'm also selling my copy of Fourth Wing. Two of them were just asking me if this Fourth Wing had the sprayed edges. I had to adjust my listing to say it's the regular version. No sprayed edges. <laughs> because I don't want to answer that question another time. Because it does not. It is the white edges. I'm actually surprised that that one hasn't gone quicker. I, I guess it's because people are looking for the version with the sprayed edges. So yeah, that's, that's my reading of the day. It is just after three. I'm going over to mom and dad's tonight. Happy Father's Day. I think we're having pizza, which is, sounds great. I mean, I had pizza last night, but like I can have pizza every night. <laughs> so I'm excited about that. Probably will have to go and get lactate on my way there. <laughs> and I got to pick up a card for my, for my dad. But I'm also trying to, I've been having the time just trying to get my Procreate app to work today because for some reason, as I draw lines, like my Procreate app, like keeps like bugging out. For, like, it keeps doing something stupid. Like it's trying to, it's assuming I want to do different things. Like if I try and draw a circle, it takes like the top of the circle and links it and like slowly drags it around. I'm like, this is not what I want to do. Like it's a morphing, morphing circle. No, I want to draw a circle and have it like an even circle, but it's not working. So my iPad is old. I've had it for many years. I had it in university and university was over five years ago now, or just about five years ago, when I graduated from university and I had this in university for like my note taking and stuff. So she's an old, she's an old lady. Um, and I'm trying to update it right now to iOS 16.7.8 to see if that helps. So then I can update the app to see if that helps. I hope it does. But I'm trying to draw our cabin kind of, like I have a very basic line drawing right now. It's kind of hard to see, but very basic line drawing based off of a number of pictures because I don't have a picture of our cabin that is just all of it from the front. I have like pieces of it and I have one picture of like the majority of it that I took at night when I was looking at the sky. It's so dark and I'm like trying to work off these photos, but I'm trying to draw this as like a gift that I'm going to kind of give both, both my mom and my dad around my mom's birthday because mom's birthday is this month. So it's Father's Day and it's their anniversary. Their anniversary was on the 11th and mom's birthday is on the 29th. So I'm gonna like gather it all together and make it like, here's a gift for June, <laughs> for the month of June. I give it to them once this is done, but I wanted to work on it today, but my Procreate app was being stupid. So anyways, I think I'm gonna try read a little bit of this. My government is trying to kill me. Uh, or my government means to kill me, just to see what it's like. It's a coming of age story, which I'm not a fan of, but it's historical fiction, it's queer and it's short. So maybe I will like this, maybe I will like it, but I, I mean, I probably hopefully will like it more than Five Broken Blades, because that was not a good time. That's my Sunday update, what a beautiful day. Bright and sunny outside, love this for me.
I'm gonna go back into this and just keep hoping that it updates itself. Downloaded. Nice. Install now. Verify. Update. Update. Anyways. <laughs> Five broken blades. Do not recommend. It's not a good time. It should not be in fucking first person present tense for that many POVs. It's so hard to follow. It's also so boring. 120 pages and nothing is happening. So, no thanks. Is there a little girl? <gasps> Excuse you! <laughs> Hi, Suko. Were you snoozing? Were you snoozing? Yeah. Come here, Stinky. <laughs> You're so cute. What is that? Oh, is it for me? Thank you so much. <laughs> Why are you the cutest? Oh, is that for me? Get well. Drop it. Hand it over. Hand it over. <laughs> Ready? Aw, oh, good girl. Good girl. <sighs> Something is in the water this weekend. What is this DNF city? Third book DNF this weekend. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? DNF'd five broken blades. DNF'd this, just because like there's nothing wrong with this book. I was listening to it. I got like maybe 35% of the way through and it's so sex heavy because it's the main character is a sex worker and he, I've seen and witnessed too many cock and balls on these pages. It is so literary and historical and I'm just like, mm, I don't really care. And I mentioned it to Ali, uh, my friend from TikTok, and she said that, yeah, no, like there's a thing about like historical literary fiction that makes you like, you just rather want to read a memoir about this rather than reading fiction about it. Because it's like, if you're going to read something like this, why not read about someone's actual experiences rather than reading a fictionalized version of it? And I was like, you fucking hit it on the nose. Like it just opened up something in my brain. I'm like, no, yeah, that makes so much sense. I would much rather read a memoir about it than read literary fiction about it. And I think that's my issue with most literary fictions, especially like the hard hitting ones, because it's just, it's just not for me. And I probably, like I could have easily finished that, and but it would have been only a two and a half or a three star. And I just, I have better things to do with my time. And then went to mom and dad's, came home, picked up this, and I was like, okay, this is dark fantasy let's go and i'm so bored this is the brand of dark fantasy that i don't like it's like there's a very specific kind of fantasy that this falls into and i have i i fear i fear that joe abercrombie falls into it for me oh god there was another one I can see the cover in my head. Is it David Dalglish one? I read I've read a few and they just don't hit for me the way that I want fantasy to. They are a subgenre of my favorite genre that just really doesn't work for me, which is so sad. Uh so that's the third book this this weekend, DNF'd. Now I'm just beginning to think that this is the universe telling me I need to start my reread of Black Sun. Just live a better life with that book. So I think that might be <laughs> that might be what ends up happening. What a time. What a time. I'm so irritated. <laughs> I'm so irritated. It hasn't been a great reading weekend. I mean the Tempest of Tea was fine, but like wasn't anything incredible amazing so i guess it's just <laughs> the luck of the draw i guess man that's like two weekends in a row where things just aren't working i don't like it i have dnf the same number of books this weekend that i have in the entirety of the year so far so I've doubled the amount of books that I've DNF'd this year, just this weekend. What the fuck is up with that? <laughs> Jesus. Anyways, yeah, I think I think it's time we dive into this series because I need to stop avoiding it. <laughs> I'm avoiding it because I know it's going to be just so fucking good, which is such a weird thing to say. 
I'm avoiding it because I know it's going to be really good. But I'm also terrified that I'm not going to like it also as much as everyone else is you know that's such a weird thing to say anyways also saga press where the fuck did you put a two just like a number on the spine of just fevered star just fevered star has a number so black sun and mirrored heavens don't but, but fevered star has a two is there a reason <laughs> is there a reason put numbers on all of them every book should have a number on the spine if it's part of a series that is my declaration and what I will do when I break connected series, there will be numbers on the spines. I promise you, I promise you, I will make it happen. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I think I'm gonna dive into this today, tonight. It's, I mean, it's like 10 to 11 at night. So what the fuck do I know? But <laughs> I just, I didn't write a damn thing this weekend. I was thinking about that. When I got home from mom and dad's, I had run a load today that had my sheets in it. So I did my bed. I changed my comforter to the summer one finally, because the one that I had on my bed was like the heavier winter one. So I changed it out to the summer one that's much lighter. Um, and then I vacuumed my whole place. And then I did a second coat of paint on the inside of my cabinet doors. Because mom is coming tomorrow, she just decided she was going to buy. It's like it's, it's almost like wallpaper, but like not for the inside of my cabinets. There's a square in the middle of them. And she's like, it'll look pretty. And I'm like, all right, you just need more projects. So <laughs> she's coming tomorrow to, to install that. And then I think tomorrow also I'm getting rid of four books that I put up on Facebook Marketplace, four of them are just gonna go tomorrow, which is great, love to see it. And four of them that I didn't realize were gonna go so quickly. We got Scythe and Thunderhead and Ordinary Monsters and Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. All of them leaving the premises of my house and I'm getting a little bit of cash for them, which is nice. Love to see that. And then I think at like six, my student, one of my students whose exam is in August is coming over to do a lesson for an hour, so. We're gonna have fun tomorrow, which is gonna be nice. But yeah, like, ugh, it's already fucking Monday again. Why do the weekends go so quickly? Anyways, I think I'm gonna start my series series vlog for this and just start with Black Sun. And hopefully this is a very good choice on my part and I just really enjoy the fuck out of this fantasy book because I need an enjoyable fantasy book. Three DNFs in a row! What the fuck is up with that? I hate it. I hate it so much. So I'm putting my faith in this series. <laughs> Welcome to the end of this vlog. What a weekend. Guys, I have news to report. I DNF'd a fourth book today in a row. Not Black Sun. Don't worry. At work. I decided to try to listen to the audiobook for Alan Rickman's diaries, Madly Deeply. I did not realize that this was published posthumously. And so it's not narrated by him. And he also didn't give consent for these to be published. So it is literally like the most private of diaries literally he's just writing about his days sometimes a day gets like one or two sentences like there's no cohesive story to it it's not like a biography where he's telling stories about his life that's kind of what i was expecting going in to have it like thoughts and musings from alan rickman in specific ways in kind of like an autobiography would be written i thought this that's what this was but no it's literally just i just took these diaries and then published it without him knowing and also without him being alive to know so i got like five percent of the way through and i was really not enjoying it like it's so disjointed it's not him narrating it. it's just some random guy they didn't even get emma thompson to do the forward they didn't get her to narrate the forward which is like if you're gonna do one thing do that you know anyways because emma thompson wrote the forward that's why anyway so yeah i dnf that one today four books in a weekend four books in a weekend dnf all gone all of them what a day. This morning started with mom showing up, doing that little wallpaper stick and peel thing in my bathroom and also in my kitchen. We just did two panels because there wasn't enough to do all the panels, but also because I think it would have been too busy. So now it's just kind of cute, like it's a little accent. I love it. It looks so good to me. I think it looks good. And then had work today, of course. And then after that, I went to, I like was conversing with people on Facebook Marketplace to buy books 
from me. Sold two books today, amazing, $20 richer. <laughs> and got two books out of my house, which is nice. And I've decided that whatever I make from this weird little Facebook marketplace venture, I'm just gonna put away and like add that to my little birthday spending money for when I wanna go buy books in September because I remembered that I was on a book buying ban. <laughs> and do I think Swordcatcher, which I got this weekend counts? No. Why? Because I used the cash that was hidden in my room. That cash isn't real. That cash has been there forever. That's not my money. That doesn't count. That's girl math for you. So sword catcher doesn't count because I didn't order it or use my debit card or any of that. It was cash money. So it doesn't count. <laughs> Which is such a stupid way of thinking of it. Any who's all my friends. So yes, what a reading weekend. I ran a Tempest of Tea through Copile. It is three and a half stars for me. Thinking about it more, it's just such a not standout book. Even though it was a good, enjoyable reading experience. I've read a few books like that where it's just like, oh yeah, no, it's enjoyable while reading it. But like once I'm done it, I don't think about it very much. And it kind of vanishes out of my brain. Like it's literally been two days, three days since I finished it. And it has vanished out of my brain. I is no is nowhere to be found. <laughs> so, and there were some things that I wish I had done more of and whatever. Three and a half stars. That's what that one gets. It's fine. It's better than the rest of my reads this weekend because we DNF'd. Five Broken Blades. My government means to kill me. Sons of Darkness, and finally, Madly Deeply, today. So, we still got two books off my TBR, my physical TBR, doing that. Madly Deeply and Five Broken Blades. The other two were from the library. But still, how annoying! Uh, leave me your recommendations down below for the very last five star you read that was so engaging you just could not put it down. It doesn't even have to be a five star. What was the last book that you read that was so engaging that you could not put it down? Because I will add it to my TBR. Please tell me. <laughs> yeah, I need some help. Because apparently none of the books that I want to read are working for me right now. I got about that far, just a little sliver into Black Sun, like 70-ish pages, I think. Yeah, 70 pages on the dot into Black Sun last night because I started falling asleep. So I was like, okay. So I was running on like five hours of sleep yesterday because that storm that was partway through this I was battling insomnia Saturday night into Sunday. And then I remember when I said, I am not gonna stay up till 4 a.m. I did because insomnia. And then 4 a.m. hit and I'm trying to fall asleep and it was a storm that was so beautiful. And I was laying in bed and I was like, if I don't get up and go watch the storm, I'm gonna be so mad at myself because I'm such a storm girly. I love me some storms. So I got up and like a creep at 4 a.m. stood in my door for a little bit to watch the rain and the hail and the thunder and lightning. And it was sheet lightning and it was continuous thunder. It was so delicious. And then I sat in my, my, on my floor in my bedroom and cracked open my window just a little bit so that I could like watch for a little while longer. I think I watched for like 15 minutes. <laughs> and then I went and I fell asleep and to the sound of the storm at like 4.30, I think I finally fell asleep. So I was running on very little sleep on Sunday, <laughs> but that's okay, that's fine. So I was like flying asleep last night earlier than I usually intend to. That was my weekend, my friends. What a time. What a time to be alive. What a Monday. Today feels like a whirlwind has gone by and I don't know why. I did a fair bit today, but I also feel like I didn't do anything. I think that's what happens when my, when my mom comes over and does projects. Cause I'm like, there's no way I can focus on work when she's here. So I'm just like hovering <laughs> while she's doing her projects. Uh, anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna leave it here. I will catch you in another video very soon. Hopefully next weekend is better for reading. <laughs> and I actually get some writing done because I did not do any writing this weekend. Oh no. Stay kind and keep on reading. Bye.